Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Kodak Signet 35. It was made from 1951 to 1958. According to the Camerosity code on the lens on this one, the lens at least was manufactured in 1951. This was designed by Arthur H. Crapsey. He designed a lot of cameras for Kodak. Others that I've used that he designed was the uh, Brownie Hawkeye, Brownie Holiday, and the Pony 2. When it first came out, this was $95. Uh, converted to today's dollars, that's about $900. So this was not a cheap camera. The post-war Kodak AG uh, cameras, the Retinas, were still considered the top of the line. This was kind of in the middle and then the ponies were, uh, sat below this during the early and mid 50s. It has a Kodak Ektar 44 millimeter lens. It was from f3.5 to f22. It's coded and color corrected as color film started to be widely available. It's a Tessar design, four elements in three groups. Uh, one thing that's a really nice feature for a rangefinder or for any camera from this era, it close focuses down to two feet. So I could actually take a picture of the video camera from here and be able to focus on it. It has a manual set uh, Kodak Synchro 300 shutter. Uh, it's a pretty nice shutter. Apparently they were really reliable. This one works. Speeds are off by a little bit, but not bad. Uh, the only downside to this shutter, it doesn't have many speed choices. It has bulb, 125th, 150th, 1100th, and 1300th. Um, sync, it's got the cover on it right now, is this oddball connector. It was adaptable to a PC cord. Uh, it's M-Sync only, so you have to... Uh, have the shutter modified or unless you know how to do it yourself if you wanted to do X-Sync for an electronic flash. It is a 1951 camera so there weren't many electronic flashes and the ones that were out there were really really expensive. It's a tough camera. The body's machined from a single piece of aluminum. There were a couple of military versions. There was an army in a sort of olive green and then uh, one for the Air Force where even the metal parts were black. Uh, it has a coincident view, meaning you know you see the two images. Uh, rangefinder focusing is by this uh, inner dial here. You can see it moving in and out. It has a helicoid at the rear, you know, a spiral that the lens travels on to move in and out. Um, there's a lever on the bottom right here that lets you defeat the uh, double exposure safeguard, I guess, because normally you can't do double exposures. This basically just uh, releases the film wind knob, but still allows it to cock the shutter. Um, it's kind of a cool slide rule type exposure calculator on the back. You set your type of film. Obviously this list Kodak films available at the time and then you match it up and then it gives you the uh, the different settings for the camera based on the light values. It's pretty nice. Um, apertures are set here. Use this ring to set your shutter speeds. It is a manually cocked shutter. So you put that down and then this big plate that touches the small lever left over from its military design so you could use it with gloves. Uh, I really had a blast with this. Viewfinder is a little bit dim. Uh, I borrowed this from a good friend so if he gives me the okay I'm going to do a CLA and I will shoot another roll through it. My test roll was some expired Kodak Gold 200. Um, not bad. So hopefully I'll run another roll through this bad boy and I'll see you then.